thing about Land of Burgers for me is it's become one of my favorite sequences in the whole movie. Come here, Harold. Maria. It's really fun. It has a great sense of humor. It's also one of the most unique parts of the movie. Not so fast. The very first meeting I had with Danny, we'd never met before, and he said, what are your two favorite sequences in the movie? And I was like, well, I love the cheetah and Land of Burgers. And he's like, well, one of them's going to get cut. We're not sure which one. We just don't have the money. I, I love this idea of a Land of Burgers fantasy sequence. We got to be creative in terms of how to, to, to save it and to, how to shoot. So the idea was to have this kind of moving green screen that I would take from uh, location to location. And whenever we had a new cameo, we'd break out this green screen and shoot them. The original idea was to see, as Harold goes into this dream sequence, is kind of recapturing his night and see all these people that he had come upon in his travels. So he had Freak Show. Hey, girl! Forget that girl. She ain't no good for you. Come on home. We had the, uh, Rosenberg Goldstein. With the idea being that once we had these green screen elements, we could cut them into a sequence that would sort of form the land of burgers. We got the rabies. As the editor, I ended up with all this footage of these people talking in front of a green screen, basically. Hey, Harold. Oh, you son of a bitch. Get you in the kishka. A raccoon. You're so hot, raccoon. Oh. Uh, when we were testing the movie and, and, uh, and, and we had the Land of Burgers sequence and it was green and it was kind of not working, we had all these characters, we found that people were just really kind of bombarded. The producers were basically saying, look, you know, we just don't have the money, we're going to have to cut the sequence. We don't have the money to cut together something that's going to be great. And we said, wait, give us a chance. We know we can find somebody out there who's creative, who really wants this opportunity. I met Danny, the director, through a good friend of mine, Christy, who used to go out with uh, Danny's assistant, Rob. I heard about Siobhan Hicks from Rob Anderson, my assistant, and then I checked out his reel, uh, which was awesome. And kind of had a retro feel, like almost like a 70s thing, and, and which I really liked. And in addition, I kind of really got into the idea of doing the sequence is kind of a flash art kind of feel. And we said, you know, that's really what this movie needs. We don't need this big elaborate animation. We really need this stuff that um, sort of is in the language of the stuff that's really playing well on the internet. Danny was just like, you know, let me see what you got. So I was able to really kind of get into my zone and just create like anything. And my first round of sketches had like a whole bunch of really edgy stuff in it. We had some mushrooms that were kind of phallic in nature. Siobhan seems to be really into the penis-shaped mushrooms. I don't know. I'm not really sure what that was about. In the original cut, there was this vignette with um, all these basketball players with uh, white tuxedos. We created these um, animated jazz guys who were playing along with them. But all that stuff got cut out. But we just needed to, to focus that part of the story uh, on the two lovers. Elevator because Harold always sees Maria in the elevator in the movie. Now there was a problem sort of showing an elevator not in the context of, of a building, like an elevator by itself, like how is that going to read? So we decided that a floor dial would be the best way to go because everyone's kind of familiar with that. And it's also sort of a callback to like early like Tex Avery cartoons when you have the floor dial bouncing back and forth, real crazy like. What we ended up with was um, a world that was really uh, simple and graphic and was all like kind of burger related or fast food related uh, edifices. I really wanted to get some animation in there and some fun animation. So I started thinking about this burger dude and what he would look like and like how he'd move around. Is he gonna have legs? Is he gonna have arms? Is he gonna jump? The burger guy, is I, I, he just makes me laugh. You know, I don't know, Siobhan came up with him. We gave him like layers of lettuce, tomatoes, and something that is like relish, but not really. The burger guys kind of hop. They kind of like spread apart as they hop up and there's a great like coiling effect that's really fun. We tried to give Harold sort of a Pied Piper vibe. 
you know, where like he'd be running through this city and like more and more people would like sort of rally for his cause. And that's where the burger dudes come in. Come in, baby. And so every time we'd cut back, there'd be more of them and they'd be following him. Baby. Like any good video game, every level has to have a boss. And that's where the cop comes in. Not so fast. The bird guys run away really fast because they're chicken. We always knew that Harold would find Marie in a castle. We didn't know what kind of castle. So what I did was I took elements from various different architectural styles and periods. Come here. I want you to hold me. Bobby, I need you. In the original script, uh, Maria had, uh, we had her shooting Cole, one of the extreme sports guys, with a crossbow, and then we had her change outfits midstream. So we were locked into that, and we also had Harold changing outfits from he's wearing this cool suit, and he changes the Zorro type of look. So uh, we had to uh, make this transition to get him into these new costumes. Siobhan came up with this idea of like posterizing them, making them into a poster. And then Jeff came up with this idea of running through this tunnel. It's really a sequence about love. Why don't we take this heart motif that we've been using a little bit and actually use that as a transition device. It also kind of helps the viewer realize, oh, now we're in like this world of, of love and, and Harold and Maria, and we're outside the burger world now. For the poster design, I looked at a lot of uh, 70s films, a lot of black exploitation stuff, and I even went back and looked at a lot of Saul Bass and stuff because those posters back then were more graphic oriented and they tried to tell a story. So then Siobhan came up with this like amazingly great tagline that there's a pinche puto in all of us. We wanted to give the movie poster a rating so it looked, you know, like a real movie poster. And so, um, you know, R was definitely out of the question. So we tried X, but it turns out that X-rated is actually copyrighted. So um, we had to dig a little deeper and we ended up using triple X. Me more triple X. It says something like nasty farm animal sex guaranteed one-way ticket to hell or something like that. Oh, <laughs>